I love this idea of making as meditation and your citing of Saul Lewitt and his treaties on conceptual art and, and how to approach art making. And I'm interested in, in not just your 10 bullets, but in your 10 bullets, but also the language that you create around your practice for yourself and, and for the people that work with you. And I'd love you to talk a little bit about how you, how you employ these, these dictums. Well, with Saul, it's, it's it's very easy to explain. Art's a very difficult thing to make. And sometimes you just don't know what to do. And the conceptual artists like Solowit or John Baldessari got to the edge of Western civilization in the 1970s. It, it's, it felt like we could, we'd done all we could do. We conquered space, went to the moon, we killed God. We broke the laws of physics by making the atom bomb and bring this sound barrier and we broke the laws of reality by producing movies that were so realistic that we believed them as trains drove through the, the, on the screen trains trains drove through the screen it looked like they're driving into the theater people would run out of the theater and these guys got to the edge of western civilization the, the ultimate expression of the enlightenment didn't know what to do short of going to asia uh, so they started making rules under which they were going to make art. And so it, it, this is sort of how I've always dealt with the existential abyss is find some guidelines under which I could produce and produce in, in a way that was physically, emotionally satisfying to me. Forget about intellectual, just the physicality of making stuff because it's the body and engaging the body. So everything that I've been doing for the past 30 years has a sense of physicality. And that's why I, one of the other weeks that we had in ISRU was um, that your body is your greatest tool and how to take mm -hmm. care of it. And so mm -hmm. we did a kind of a Solowitz style wall drawings that we inserted the idea of push-ups in there, which is very not Saul at all. Like he was a swimmer, but he wasn't the kind of guy that would do, he wasn't like H.C. Westerman doing gymnastics in the carpentry shop. He was just a different kind of um, person. And, and um, but it, in a way it's a genuine reflection of, me and my team that's something that we all do push-ups so I, I think I've, I've, I've always as long as I've had a team I've always set up these rules as a way of just making sure that the things have a consistency to them that they all look like each other that they're all part of the same family of sculptures that they're all made by they all look like they're made by the same person and I think that's something that I've struggled with because I'm interested also in heter heterogeneity and I'm not I don't want everything to look the same, but I understand the importance of things communicating with each other um, uh, formally. Mm -hmm.